Well, let's talk about power scan filters. This might provide some more information. Now, chart analysis, of course, is the hub of successful trading. You need to interpret chart patterns in order to have a fairly accurate prediction of what a stock might do. What I'm going to show is one of the simpler examples of this. This is a six-month chart of a typical stock. And that yellow line is the exponential moving average for that time period. Now, notice that whenever the price falls below that moving average, it tends to keep falling. Whenever it rises above the moving average, it tends to keep rising. Fall, rise. You see that. Now, therefore, the price and relationship to a moving average is a really good directional indicator, and it's used by a lot of traders. Except there's only one problem. How do you find this? How do you find one that's about to turn, or one that has turned? Because, you see, there's thousands of stocks. So if you were to find a good setup of a price, let's say, that's moving above its moving average for the first time in a while, that could be a, a flag. That could be a, a, an indicator that the stock's going to keep rising. But there's thousands of stocks. You'd have to page through every one of them. Well, that's where the power scan filter comes in. A power scan filter is really just a series of one or more formulas. A formula is a condition, you know, like... A, well, in our case, what we just looked at, the price being above or below a moving average is a condition. If all the conditions are tested, and they're all tested in real time, whenever they're all true, that's what we call a hit. So, if you were to apply these formulas to all the stocks in the market in real time, it will go, boom, hit, there's your stocks that match the criteria that you're looking for. Now, in this case, we want to detect when the stock is crossing the moving average. So we're going to create a new filter. To do so, you, of course, you select Configure Filters from the Settings menu in PowerScan Pro, and you get this window. Now, just a quick uh, brush up here. That is your filter list, the list of existing filters that you already have. Now, if you double-click on one, It'll open up and show you the formulas inside that filter. These were created earlier. You click once on a formula, and you have the settings for that formula. It's really that simple. Now, we want to create a new filter. So you click New Filter, and one is created with no title and no formulas. So then you have to add formulas to really make it a filter. So you click Add Formulas. So now let's go to the actual program and do this for real. So we open up Configure Filters, we go New Filter, let's call this Price Moves Above. All right, now we have to add a formula, let's go Add Formula. Now when you get this window, this is a little bit more complicated because it's got hundreds of different formula types you can put in. You've got a category we call Highs and Lows. <clears throat> which would be something like a 52-week <clears throat> high, that sort of thing. You got bars and histograms, which will measure bars on a bar chart. And you got indicators and crossovers. That's the one we want now because we're going to have a indicator called the EMA, Exponential Moving Average. So let's add that. Click on it so we can get our settings. Now, the EMA has a lot of different settings you can choose. We're going to choose price is above the moving average. It even gives us a percent range. So in other words, I can say it needs to be 1% above the moving average. All right, and But it should be no higher than 5%. So i got 1 and 5 in there. Now also, I want to know when it crosses over. This is very key. See that checkbox there? If you check that, that means to only report stocks where the price has just now crossed over that moving average line. If you don't check that, it's going to give you all stocks with prices above the moving average. That could have crossed two weeks ago. Okay, our filter is complete. It's that simple. And let's go try it. So we called this 
what do we call it? Yeah, price moves above. So we click on it once. <clears throat> it's now thinking about it. The server is scanning for the all stocks that match that criteria. It might take a little while. It's usually slower when the market's closed, oddly. There we go. I just found every one of them. Yep, see that one just crossed. You see that? That one crossed. Here, let me get a blow up of it. See how it, it was below the moving average and then it popped up. You see that? So it's finding every one of them for us. Pretty slick. Now, here's the deal. What if you want something a little stronger than that? Because you're going to get a lot of stocks that, okay, it crossed the moving average, but it's not that strong. How do you strengthen your, your, your setup? I want to show what I'm talking about. Take this chart here. Same moving average, but a different chart, different stock. Notice there, it's, it looks like it's crossing, right? It looks like, and it did cross right there. However, it crossed right there. But look at the, all of those failed. The stock went down, even though it tried to cross. How do you prevent that? How do you... How do you keep those false positives from popping up in your filter? Well, I have one way, just as an example, and that's you have to wait for something to cross handily. In other words, have it cross once and then go way up above that. That indicates great strength, and then you're going to really have something. So in other words, this is what we're looking for. A crossover, which is that first green bar, and then it goes yet even higher on the next bar. So let's go modify the filter to do that. Let's go back to settings, configure filter, and we're going to have uh, we're going to go to price above. Our price moves above. Now we only had one EMA, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to add another one, and you're going to see what I'm doing here. We're going to add another one. But let's go to the first one, and instead of having a crossover right now, we're going to have this crossover yesterday. So we go over here to the bar menu, and we select previous bar <coughs> as opposed to the current bar. So we got previous bar for EMA number one, and EMA number two is the current bar, and it has to be above the moving average. Okay, so bar one has to cross over. Remember, I gotta check that crossover for yesterday's bar. Okay, formula one, the price crossed the EMA yesterday. Formula two, the price is well above the EMA today. In fact, we're gonna bump up that percentage. This gives us a much stronger setup. Let's try it now that we modified it. Okay, price moves above. It's a new formula, so it has to think about it again. Come on, come on. There we are. It came up with quite a few. See, now that's a nice setup. <clears throat> I'll tell you why. why, why uh, I'm talking about that. You see it crossed at the end of day yesterday. Right there you can see that. And then it crossed again and it went a little higher. So this is a really nice setup here. That one's a beautiful setup. Because it not only crossed, it crossed really good. And look at that thing fly when it did it before back here. That's a nice setup. I would, I would play that one as a trade. Anyway, you get the idea. And the other thing I wanted to show you in this presentation is sharing. If you don't know how to create filters or want to get help from somebody else, there's a great feature. It's called filter sharing, and I'll show you how that works. You go again to configure filters, and you go import. What you get on import is you have all the filters 
that people have posted in this sharing bin over the years. Look at some of these go back to, you know, year 2012. But everyone who's made filters, and a lot of people are really good at it, they've posted their filters here. And you can look at different ones, and a lot of them will have a description. And you can import them. Like if you want to import that, you'd add it. And I want to import this one. I add it. And then you should go import, and they come right into your list. Now, if you want to post your own filter, you click on the one you want to post, and you go share, and up comes a little dialog, and you put in a description of the filter, and you click OK, which will post it to the sharing board for other people to use. All right? There's nothing as powerful as PowerScan. And we've made it as simple as possible.